Um, the problem is when I was doing my research, I found uh, different sources suggesting different things. Thank you educators out there for being unclear about this. Hello there and welcome for day four of 100 days of Kubernetes. Welcome for joining me. For those who are new to me, my name is Anais and this is a channel where we learn about Kubernetes with ugly drawings. So today I'm going to be looking specifically at services. What services are used for within pods and how they are enhancing our network connection within our Kubernetes cluster. So let's get started. Remember we have here as always our Kubernetes cluster. Really beautiful, I know. This is our Kubernetes cluster and within that we have our main node, also called master node, and we have our worker nodes. Now right now let me just create two worker nodes. So, and within worker nodes we have our little pods. Yay! Now if you're interested in more details around the uh, Kubernetes architecture and how pods are created, what pods are. Check out the previous video if you would like an overview of the Kubernetes architecture. Check out my first video of the challenge, which kind of provides an overview. Now, this is just going to get better each video, so stay tuned for the next ones. Um, so, as I mentioned in the previous videos, each pod, once you create it, has its own IP address. So, this has an IP address, then we have here another pod. Uh, Pod, and that also has its IP address and so on. So if you spin up a new pod and you want to have multiple pods that are identical to each other, you wouldn't manually spin up a new pod one by one. But instead you would define within your YAML syntax, a JSON syntax, you would define replicas. So you could, for example, say you want to have two replicas of that pod. And in this case, this would be replica one and this would be replica two. So and each of those pods will receive their own unique IP address. The problem is now that pods that are, they are eth ephemeral, I think that's how you pronounce it, they are ephemeral. So they uh, spin up and die really quickly, meaning every time the new pod is spin up, um, it will get assigned a new IP address. And that's kind of problematic because of the IP address consistently changes with like infrequently, just whenever something happens or whenever the cluster has to be maintained or so on, then um, we have to make sure that the other pods and external uh, objects that are connected to our pods know about the change of the IP address. So to prevent that, we have services. This is now our service. Now I have a confession to make. I'm not sure if like the service is within the cluster and just one service per cluster, or if we actually have one service wrapped around each pod. So the service is actually an abstraction layer of the pod's IP address. If we have replicated pods, like in this case, and we have, let's say we have here two containers within that pod and two containers within this pod, then we would expose, for example, for this pod, we would expose one internal IP address, for example, 3000. And for this container, we would expose, for example, 5000. Um, now, in a repli replica set, we would do the same for this pod. So this would be 3000 and this would be 5000, this container. Let's say the process of the application within the pod uh, get a request. So the service would first interface with that request and then decide, okay, which of those pods is best in handling um, the response. So it could either forward it to this IP address and let's say that container or this IP address and that container. Remember, those are the same containers in that case as a replica set. Um, so it would make that decision for us. So usually we have within our cluster, we have the um, pods IP address as cluster IP defined. We can also have it as node IP and load balancer. In the case of node IP and load balancer, we would um, expose the IP address externally to our cluster. Now I'm not 100% sure yet how that works, so that will be something for later videos. Uh, you can also let me know useful links in the comments, that would be amazing. Remember this is, this is core learning, like I rely on you. Mm -hmm both ways. <laughs> anyway, um, so usually we would have cluster IP, cluster IP defined in our YAML for those pods to set up those pods. Yeah. Uh, and then the service would interface with an ingress controller 
and the ingress controller would be kind of our interface to the outside world. However, um, this is obviously, this is not the correct way it would work since usually all communication would happen through, like if we set something up, it would happen through our um, main node over here. So this is like, take it as a high level abstraction what I'm drawing here, yeah? So in this case, the ingress controller would regulate the traffic from the outside world. So any requests that come from the outside world to our applications here um, would be handled through ingress and then ingress would communicate with the service and the service would regulate the network traffic internal within our cluster. So now how does the service know uh, which parts it has to take care of. So for instance, in this case, the service would have to take care of the applications that are running within this part and within this part. Um, now what if we have here different application running in this node, in the second node, um, in this part and in this part, but the service doesn't have to take care of this. How does the service know it has to only take care of this, of the parts within this node? And let's say we have another service that has to take care of the applications running on those parts in this node. Well, we have something called a selector within our YAML syntax. So when we define the configuration of our applications, of our parts and of our cluster, we can provide a selector. And a selector is basically a key value pair within our YAML syntax that tells it um, that the service has the same uh, attributes in that case as our parts. So we can provide different specification for this service and those parts as for the service in these parts. Next week I'm going to be looking more in detail at the YAML syntax and setting up the stuff actually on my cluster. So that will provide I guess more clarity. For those who are already familiar with my channel know that I'm a huge fan of Notion. I keep all of my public links and resources here. Anything that I come across, any of my, of my notes that I think are useful etc etc. As well well as my 100 days of Kubernetes. And within that page, if you click on it, you can find all of my previous notes of the previous days. So we have here today's notes, which are not that many, but they are more extensive than the video. <laughs> and then we have the previous notes with the video in more extensive format. So if you prefer written content, you can have a look at that too. So this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. It's highly appreciated for this content. I try to improve each time. So if you have any comments, suggestions, anything I should be learning about throughout those 100 days, please leave those in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you would like to follow along this challenge or future challenges, please subscribe to my channel. I promise I do my best in making amazing content for you. Also, if you have related it or I work or are interested in the DevOps space, <laughs> I have a weekly newsletter where I share any free content that I came across that really helped me in my learning journey and might help you. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, link below. Anyway, I hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.